Hey guys, very warm welcome to all of you. In this video, we will gonna discuss about various methods and concepts behind the clot detection mechanism, which is happening inside an automated instrument like coagulation analyzer or coagulometer. What we will not gonna do in this video is learn how to press button on instrument to get it started or to load a sample or to run an instrument or print reports from the instrument. We will not gonna do all this stuff. The only thing we will do in this video is concepts understanding, concept understanding. So let's begin with the topic. First of all, watch this video. So what actually going here? So this procedure is known as manual tube tilt technique, which is which was the gold standard techniques couple of years ago. So what we will do in this technique, we put plasma reagents and calcium chloride in a test tube and we will incubate it at optimum temperature for ongoing reaction. Then we basically look for a visible clot by tilting the tube at few intervals of time like few seconds then we again dip in the water bath and again we take out and look for the clot so as soon as clot is visible to the person who is performing the test we get our result time that is 35 seconds 20 seconds whatever is the test or whatever is the result so basically all this stuff is replaced by this automated instrument coagulation analyzer. So now what actually happening inside an automated instrument for clot detection is what we will gonna discuss here. So first method, first and most common method which is widely used in automated instrument for coagulation studies. So this is a cuvette or vessel in which we have a stainless steel ball. Here is a magnet. This is the magnet. Here also is the magnet. The principle here is at one point of time this magnet is activated. After some time it gets deactivated and this one becomes activated. This alternatively activate and deactivate. So what happens to the ball or stainless steel ball? When this magnet is activated, this will go here. When this deactivated, it will again go down and this will activate it, then it go here. Same thing gonna repeat, repeat, repeat again and again until and unless clot is formed. When clot is formed, the range of motion, range of motion of ball moving in oscillating pattern will be reduced or minimal. So when ball is normally moving, normally oscillating on activation and deactivation of magnets, then clot is like this normal. When range of motion is minimized due to clot formation, this will go like this and stays. Here at this point of time, chronometer get stopped as clot is formed. This is how it will detect the time for clot formation. So here to better understanding I will show you a video you can watch it. See you can see one time one magnet is activated ball is moving on that side and again alternatively this man and again alternatively these magnets are activating deactivating and ball is moving as per situation but as soon as clot get formed then chronometer stop so as soon as clot got formed then range of motion will be diminished or minimal and clot is detected by the sensors inside it and we will get the reading in seconds. So this was the first and most popular methods of clot detection nowadays. Let's go to second or more conventional method I must say. 
so guys in this method we are using electromechanical system here one electrode or one probe electrical probe is fixed at position and one is free to move or free to oscillate so here what will gonna happen is we put all the reagent stuff in a qubit and these probes one is fixed inside it and one is free to move or free to oscillate so connection is like this one time connection established other time breaks again establish again break again establish again break but as soon as clot is formed so will the firm clot will allow the movement of this free electrode or probe no answer is no because clot engages it inside and not allow the motion or oscillatory motion this will lead to continuous electric circuit completion or you must say uninterrupted electrical contact is established after the clot formation so at this point of time sensor will say oh permanent electrical contact is established that means clot is formed and we will dictate the chronometer to stop it and note the reading so this was the again little conventional or older methods nowadays it is very less used in automated instrument so now move forward to other methods which are mechanical so this is called inclined magnetic steel ball based clot detection method it is most simplest one like here this thing is rotating this thing shows that whole instrument is rotating whole qubit holder or qubit is rotating but here steel ball is basically attracted to magnetic sensor so everything is gonna rotated uh, as whole system is rotating but mag due to presence of magnet steel ball will stay at that position as plasma is liquid in nature at this point of time so it will not gonna take away the steel ball away from the magnet but as soon as as soon as clot get formed or clot get formed so clot is solid so here when when the instrument gonna rotate the clot will rotate as plasma is coagulated so it is solid and it will take away the ball from the magnetic sensor that is away from the magnetic sensor and this break in the contact between magnetic sensor and steel ball indicates the chronometer to stop it and record the reading that was also very simple and one of the most important method now we will look at the optical method previously we have discussed about the mechanical method that is basically based on the viscosity of plasma now we will discuss about the optical methods so for a moment suppose this is normal plasma we had all the reagent and all the related stuff for a reaction and incubate it 37 degrees celsius after some time you will see the clot or fibrins started to form and it is simple science that after the clot formation or after the fibrin thread formation the solution or the plasma becomes optically dense so due to this higher optical density the auto analyzers can calculate amount of fibrin formed thereby we will get the concentration of fibrinogen so basically this was the basic fact about optical method the photo optical method now another methods which included in optical one turbidometry and nephelometry so what happens in nephelometry or this kind of phenomena is a light is passed through the reaction vessel in which your reaction is going on some of the light get transmitted some of get deviated from its path that is called side scatter forward scatter and guys all these reading for transmittance or scattering is taken prior to the reaction and after the reaction when clot is formed 
so the difference between but what we have before reading and what we have after the completion of reaction is the material which helps in the calculating the amount of change or amount of change can dictate us about the concentration so this was about the optical method another optical method is chromogenic method chromogenic means color producing or color generating this kind of test performed with analyte activated protein c so this was this must be present in the plasma or we have the sample and here is the mimicry molecule of factor 8 and 5 attached with the chromophore or color producing substance when activated protein c cuts down these uh, mimicry molecules for these substances the chromophore will produce color due to breakdown and the amount of color production is directly proportional to percentage of activated protein c present in the plasma now the last method of optical phenomena is involve the latex particle conjugated with antibodies now suppose you have a factor 8 in your plasma and you have the these particles so when we will mix these two reagents or with the sample can i say this will occur or agglutination will occur so again when you pass the light through the solution the optical density indicated is higher as due to agglutination or combination of antibodies and substance of our interest makes these complexes and the solution become more optically dense and thereby we will measure its concentration depending on it so these different methods are basically to get different things like in aptt or pt what we will need to know is actually the time what is time for prothrombin time or what is activated partial thromboplastin time but in case of fibrinogen we will want to know the concentration of fibrinogen like 250 mg to 30 mg in case of activated protein c we want to know the percentage how much protein c is activated present in the plasma So these all different methods are present in combination or in separation depending on the instrument you are using. Thank you so much for watching.